endorsed by one government body, censured by another on the same day. Competing announcements that add to the confusion following the controversial presidential runoff election in Guatemala nine days ago. The Supreme Electoral Tribunal has already officially ratified the results of August 20. Therefore, Dr. Karen Herrera is vice president-elect and I'm president-elect. This is an irrefutable fact. Apart from that, there is the suspension of the seed movement that has no relation with our ratification. Despite the resounding result in the runoff, the impact of his political party being suspended is unclear. The suspension is unlikely to affect his swearing-in due in January, but it could weaken his rule before it begins. I think this is extremely alarming because every day they are trying to confuse us with news, with disinformation, by generating fear and psychological warfare. Honestly, I am fed up with the system. I'm fed up that they are playing with the will of the people in this way. Arevalo's election opponent, former First Lady Sandra Torres, accuses him of voter fraud, something the electoral registry that banned his party is investigating. Acting President Alejandro Giamate has so far not publicly commented. Arevalo, the son of a former diplomat, is an unlikely winner. His ballot box success as an anti-corruption campaigner represents a threat to the country's elite and the status quo. Arevalo's progressive campaign resonated with Guatemalans who are tired of corruption and hungry for change. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera. Let's get more on this. We can speak to Javier Fahe. He's an analyst specializing in Latin American affairs. He joins us now from London. Thank you for your time. Now, as I understand it, there was an attempt to suspend the seed party during the election itself, but the motion was blocked by a high court. So what's changed now? Basically, what happened was that the Supreme Electoral Tribunal has already ratified Mr. Arevalo's victory, and he's the new president-elect. A, a department of the Electoral Tribunal, called the Citizens' Registry, suspended the legal status of his party, Semilla, or seat, uh, you know, and just minutes before the announcement of his victory was made uh, yesterday. So... There was like, like two departments of the same institution fighting one another. Uh, the, but from the moment the Supreme uh, Court, the Supreme Tribunal, the Electoral Tribunal, declares Mr. Arevalo a winner, there's nothing anyone can do about that. The suspension of the legal status of this party may cause some legal trouble in the future, but they cannot step, stop Mr. Arevalo from being sworn in as president of Guatemala. We have to understand that the people who've been involved in trying to suspend this party, uh, to suspend its legal status, are people who are already accused of corruption by the United States. Who, uh, a judge called Freddy Orellana uh, denounced Mr. Uh, Arevalo's party as fraudulent signatures, signatures that are required to be registered as a political party. But Mr. Orellana is in the list of corrupt officials sanctioned by the United States. This uh, denunciation by this judge was sent to the special prosecutor's office against impunity led by somebody called Rafael Curruchiche, another judge been sanctioned for corruption by the United States. Right. So this city's registry actually suspended, based on these accusations, the legal status of Semilla, but that will not stop Mr. Arevalo from becoming president. OK, so just to be clear, he doesn't have to appeal this in any way. He is due to take office, I understand, on the 14th of January. That is likely to go ahead as planned. Yes, but he has to he has to appeal. He will because this this suspension of the legal status of Semilla may cause some trouble throughout the transition from the outgoing government to the new government. They might be they might prevent certain people within the team that will lead the transition from doing their work. And that is what could create a lot of problems. But also it's going to create political uncertainty in a country which, with the election of Mr. Arevalo, wants to get out of this uncertainty. We mustn't forget Mr. Arevalo is an anti-corruption candidate. And, and he's received death threats to such an extent that in January, the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights demanded protection for him to prevent 
something happening to him as it happened in Ecuador with Fernando Villavicencio, the anti-corruption presidential candidate who was assassinated on the 9th of August. So we're talking about a corrupt elite, according to all the analysts, in including the UN International Commission Against Impunity, who are trying to prevent this anti-corruption president from taking office in January next year. That is basically what is looking, what, what is happening at the moment in Guatemala. What seems incredible is that this is allowed to happen because the majority of people, from what I understand, support Arevalo. Oh, yes. What's happening is that the establishment Judge Freddy Orellana, uh, the, Judge uh, Rafael Curruchiche, the Attorney General Consuelo Porras, who raided the offices of the tribune, of the Electoral Tribunal, who is also in the list of 10 corrupt officials sanctioned by the United States, they constitute the current elite, the current establishment, political and judicial establishment in Guatemala. They have the power, which means that they are trying to prevent an anti-corruption president from taking office because they fear that the investigation may lead to more prosecutions against these people. So this is, we're talking about a, a, a system which has been in place for the last at least 10 years, but all these uh, alleged these corrupt officials uh, have the power in Guatemala, and they are trying to prevent Mr. Arreguero from taking office. And of course, the government of Alejandro Yamete, which is the ongoing president, has been accused also of corruption to mm. such an extent that the International Commission Against Impunity, which was expelled from Guatemala in 2019, has clearly accused the current government and many me members of the government and the judiciary of being part of corruption. So right. this is looks, based on the analysis, a, a, a corrupt elite which are afraid that anti -cor an anti-corruption president uh, takes office and they start investigating them. Right, got it. Okay, good to speak to you. Javier Fahe, analyst specializing in Latin American affairs. Thank you.